All right, what is going on, everyone? And welcome back to the CHB podcast. I'm with my boy, Daddy D. We've both got the fresh carts and we're back again for a, a tips and predictions. We actually didn't do last week. We both kind of forgot. Like, yeah, I, I didn't do too well in the tips this week, I don't think, anyway. So I'm kind I don't of glad. Think anyone did. Like, I yeah, think we all kind of got stuffed hard. up. I, haven't, we yeah, haven't I got even four. Again. Really? Man, yeah, I don't even I know four. how much I got. Yeah, because gonna... I tipped Essendon, bro. <laughs> Ooh. Will, ke- I, Will convinced me on the train about Essendon on the and bombers. then I switched it. I uh, thought they were prime timed. Man. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to, I think I got one, one, two, ooh, three, four, five. I probably got like five right, I reckon. Yeah. And... I don't, I tipped Frio, even though they, they don't have anyone to kick their goals. and Yeah. Oh, oh well. man. That, they're in shambles. Well, we'll move on now. Week three. Week three. And we're looking at the first game, which happens to be Doggies versus Sydney, an underrated rivalry on a Thursday night. I feel like nothing really came out of that rivalry, like in the 2016 final series. Oh, no, it didn't. Like, somehow they became more rivals with GWS than they did Sydney. Oh, yeah, after that prelim that year. Yeah. That who, was who's, hard fought. Who's taken this one out? Well, I'm pretty excited for this game. I'm pretty sure that the dogs will bounce back because they have to eventually. And everyone's predicting, obviously, them to be top four. Mm. Uh, and I did see something the other night where teams that had lost in the grand final by a fair amount, they dropped pretty far. But... The dogs just have such a good list. I don't think that they will drop out of the eight considering everyone else that's in contention for it. So yeah. I'm tipping them to get it done at home against Sydney, who will be coming off a massive week, off a massive game last week. Mm. So I will go with the dogs. I I think it will be only like a four or five goal affair uh, yeah. difference, but I will Agreed. go the dogs. I think... With the doggies, it's such a re- it's like one of the most weirdest teams in the league because I look at their list and I'm like, this team should be good for the next five years. Like, you got oh, um, their players are quite young. Is it is it Sam Darcy? Was he the he was the one right? I know his last name. Is oh, Darcy. they got drafted. Yeah, 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 yeah. You think I... about him? He should be their future key back for the next billion years. Jamara should be their Jamara and um Norton should be their future keys. This team should be fine. The issue is, I really feel like they're like one of those Robbie Tarrant players away. Like, they just need that extra oh, yeah. key defender. Like, I feel... Desperately. I feel maybe nearly more bad for Alex Keith than anyone in the game. Because that guy, man, he goes through it. He's taking on, like, yeah. the two best key def- forwards and every single week. Back there to help him, he's only got, like, Ryan Gardner as the other tall who yeah. got drafted in, like, the mid-season draft or something. So they definitely need another key back. And if Darcy can get in the team, I completely forgot that they drafted yeah. him, to be honest. I think he's he out for a long list. time, too. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't think he was ever really going to play much this year. But, um, and there's also the, is he a key forward? Is he a key back? I think he'll definitely be a key back on this dog yeah, side. Yeah, they have obvious. to be. Yeah, they have to send him down back because there was talks about moving Norton down back, but yeah. you simply can't do that now. Like, yeah, he'd be great back there with mm. the contested marks, but he's just so valuable up forward. Yeah. I definitely have the doggies winning this one, though. They have to come back. Their back line is just so bad. Like, I don't understand how yeah. you can have a top three um, midfield. And then when their forward line's on, it's obviously a top eight caliber forward line easily. But their back line is, I think, one of the worst in the AFL at times. When they're on, they're definitely in the middle. But, like, there are games when they just get smacked around. Like, look at the grand final. The back line got played oh, yeah. around easily. And their midfield turned it on and got them back into that game in the grand final. But when Melbourne came back at them, they just had yeah, nothing just, left to give. So it goes it. under the radar how poor the Doggies' defence actually is yeah. because of what they've achieved. But, yeah, you do make a really good point. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I guess we could probably go on to a different video on how they fix that. But I think the re- what we're trying to get at here is the doggies are too talented to go zero and three. Way oh, too yeah. talented. You can't. And the Swans are 
I don't know if they're a talented enough team to be a three and zero. That's my thing. That's my thinking. Yeah. Is I think the doggies have to win this one. People are really jumping on the Swans, Swans now yeah. after that game against Geelong. But uh, you'd need to see more of them. I mean, it's only two rounds in and yeah. the dogs need to win this because it's a long way back if they even drop another one in the next couple of weeks after that. I'm pretty sure they have us the week after at the G. Yeah. So that's another game that they could drop. So it is pretty much they have to win and get back on track. Yeah. D's versus Bombers, MCG. Uh, we've got two Friday night games next week. I, uh, riddle dumb me this. Fixturing. Yeah. Um. These easily. Uh. The Bombers are. Uh, they are in shambles. They have one of the worst forward lines in the game. I saw and... people saying they have the worst forward line in the game. I'm not going to go into if they do, but my God, watching their forward line try and play was one of the oh, worst things I've seen. It was horrible. Peter Wright was on at the start of the game and then just yeah. completely faded out. And they were just playing at nothing the entire game. I can't believe they only lost by like 20 points or whatever it was. <laughs> but uh, like they need Stringer to be firing and they've got Stringer in the middle most of the time now as well. So they need mm. him to be kicking goals. And then like they're relying on Archie Perkins to yeah. pop up and kick some. Like their forward line is... Really, they, they quite definitely bad. needed Ben King so bad. Oh, and yeah, they have the worst small forward depth in the league. Like, Tip has gone. What happened to old mate Mosquito? Is he still in the league? I'm, yeah, I'm pretty Did sure Mosquito, he might have retired or like left something the game. Happened, I don't know if yeah. he's still on their list, but you'd hope he still is. Like, yeah. he was pretty exciting. And even if, whether he is or not, he's not playing. Like, no. where are their small forwards? And they don't have a genuine key. Like, Peter Wright's cool and all, but I don't They've know. I got... feel like Peter Wright needs to be the second option slash backup oh, rock. Definitely. Peter number Wright cannot one. be your number one number option, one especially option. for a team, like, going, hoping to compete for the eight. And, like, yeah. up forward, they've got, like, other than Wright, They've got, like, Devin Smith, who a bunch of Essendon supporters at the game were hating on. Like, they did not <laughs> like Devin Smith. Yeah. And he was pretty hopeless. So, they yeah. Ultimately, I, just need to draft a guy. They need to... Like, I, I did... I was speaking to an Essendon fan, and please don't think we're hating on Essendon. So, I had a, an Essendon fan um, text me, and he actually asked me, why are they worse this year than last year? And I think this is one of the very simple cases of you need to take a step backwards to go forward because they need to draft a key forward with a top pick this year and then you could realistically be on very soon. And, man, there's there's a player who I want to get into who I think has really revolutionized himself as a player and um, as, a, as a guy who I think teams will look at this type of player now. But I feel like Essendon... It, Almost like, did you watch Levi Casbol for the Suns, bro? Did you uh, this see, week. Yeah, did you see him this week? No, I didn't see that game. I got home right as it was ending, I think, or 15 minutes Man, after. if they didn't have a Levi Casbol on their team right now, he was taking big contested marks all across the ground, and he kicked a couple snags, and I think he did the same the week before. You almost yeah. think Essendon just need to pick up maybe one of those D-listed guys that are just floating around that could use that second option. Yeah, you're right. I mean, somehow the Suns only lost by 13 points. So I'd like to go yeah. back and watch and I'm like, telling the highlights you right of now, that game. If they had Ben King, they were winning that game. Because oh, yeah. Casbolt and Chol did so well. They just... You just not, like, Casbolt, no matter how good he's been this season, it's still Levi Casbolt. You can't rely yeah, on like him Yeah, like, they're to playing to the, the best of their ability. Yeah, their ability. Like, this is the best Casbolt's probably ever played in his career. Like, he has <laughs> been very good on the Suns. But yeah, I feel like the Bombers, they need to draft the dude and maybe sign a guy. But yeah, the D's, yeah. D's easily win it, I think. Yeah, and I, me and Will were saying after the game, like Essendon really kind of overperformed and exceeded expectations last year. And the supporters probably needed to reevaluate where they were at before yeah. the season, especially with the list they've got. So mm. they've kind of been getting found out. So... I feel Obviously, like they were one of the only home. teams that should not have drafted Hobbs. Like, out of every team oh, yeah. for Hobbs to go to, he went to Essendon, which has quite a capable midfield that desperately needed, like, a key forward or even maybe could even need a key back one day, and they somehow got another inside mid. Yeah, <laughs> so that, like, their midfield's, their midfield's the best part of their team yeah. by quite some margin. Yeah. 
So the other thing is, now we've got Adelaide versus Port Adelaide on a Friday night game. I don't know why they're making us pick and choose on a Friday night. Um, it's, it's it makes weird. no sense, bro. They've got like a six-hour gap between the games on Saturday too. Yeah. So here's the thing. Port are last and Adelaide are 15th. And I'm saying this right now. Port, they need to come out and absolutely destroy the oh, Crows. Like it has to be like a 60-point win. Um, and I've got them winning because they have to win. Or their season's yeah. gone, obviously. They have to respond after last night. Yeah. Like that looked real, real ugly. I, I didn't watch the game. It. I watched the Suns game instead. Yeah, so. but um, Adelaide, I did catch like a quarter or so of their game against Collingwood. Right. And obviously they didn't look good. Too the bad. week. Well, they looked okay yeah, the average. week before. But uh, yeah, they didn't look too good this week from yeah. what I saw. So you'd imagine Port come out and absolutely demolish them. Yeah. Really not much to talk about with this one. Port just needs to demolish them. End of story. I've got the power. Um, do you as well, I'm assuming? Yeah, obviously. Yeah. All right. Giants versus Gold Coast at Giants Stadium. This is a very tough one. This is a very indecisive one because the Giants right now have lost both of their games and God, did their game plan against the Tigers look absolutely terrible. How many years have I been saying Leon Cameron needs to go? Yeah, you're right. They had no right. system and whatsoever. It was non-existent. I was, just, I was thinking about it. Like, he's been there for quite some time now. Like, is it time for them to give someone another go with that list yeah. like did you look bro. behind you were like is leon cameron watching me or is shit <laughs> well legit i thought he was coming to sort me out doing a bit oh hold on a second no, I'm never... <laughs> <laughs> trying to copy my uncle bro what's he trying to copy my uncle's style <laughs> no but bro they have when their midfield is working it could be considered a top five in the league and I know their oh, back line the and forward line. I mean, their forward line is obviously bottom four probably in the game, um, especially with Toby Green out. My God, is it bad? Oh, yeah, um, they need Toby Green. Their back line is super inconsistent. Um, I've probably got it bottom eight, obviously. Their midfield, again, could be top five when they're on. But against Richmond, the only thing they needed to do was beat Richmond's midfield and they possibly could have had the game. And yeah, somehow, that's all they needed to do going into the game. Somehow, they got beaten. Cochin played one of the best games I've seen him play in a long time. Oh, yeah. Um, Hold on. I'm going on the stats here because I've obviously watched this game a little bit ago now. You, not only just Cochin, but the Rucks, Nankervis, and yeah. Soldo tore they them. They got an destroyed. New one. They got destroyed in the Rucks because... Nank kicked the goal. Soto went forward and kicked two. Yeah. They went in with just Matt Flynn. It, it was just a silly, yeah. silly game plan. Yeah. And then Pickett. My God. Marlon oh. Pickett gave Jacob Hopper and Tom Green the biggest reality check ever. Like, if you... Like, look at this right now. Pickett had 18 disposals and um, Green had 34, right? So a very big difference. But honestly, in the quality of how both of them played, oh. I think Green had like a 56% kicking efficiency. That means yeah, he every was second turning kick it was over. Shit. Yeah. He was turning it over so much at the game. I, I actually like so much that I actually noticed it yeah. like in the last quarter. Like he, he got there on the stats. A lot of their players got there on the stats. Mm. But uh Carano was really probably their only big highlight, I think, in the midfield. He was yeah. all over us at some stages. He he keeps improving and he goes forward and kicks goals for them in a forward line that yeah. needs goals. So he's like one of their most valuable players right now, if not their most. Yeah. And I did say as well. Um, how I thought Richmond were actually going to lose to him is I thought their midfielders were going to kick all the goals, which I actually ended up being right. Cali kicked two, Canelio kicked two, and Torano kicked two. It's just yeah. their other forwards, oh, and Bruin kicked one. Their, the only forwards who kicked a goal for them was Himmelberg, Brander, and that's it. They had two forwards kick a goal. That Hogan, bad... yeah, Hogan and Riccardi did nothing. Hogan yeah. was, I did not see that man all day. Have... The woman in front of me thought that he got injured, like, in the first quarter. That's how much he was unnoticeable. I have never seen anyone get locked up more by a second gamer, I think, uh, in my life. Ridiculous. Ben Miller just shoved him in his pocket 
and didn't care the whole game. The the inexperience in our backline too, like Broad played better than he usually does oh, for Broad sure. Was insane. But we had Gibkiss and Miller. We had no yeah. Bloston, no Grimes. Like yeah. their forward line, even though it's not very good, they still have like play, key players down there. Himmelberg does pop up and kick a lot of goals. But you would have expected Jesse Hogan to kick a few at least. Oh man, it is crazy. And then so we're talking about this against Gold Coast now. I really think we're egging ourselves on for Gold Coast to win this it's, game because if Richmond's backline can contain this GWS team, imagine Gold Coast should be easily able to take care of them. Plus, they've got no Phil Davis now. I'm really wondering who's going to go on Casbolt and Cho because even though they might not sound like a problem, I don't know who their key defenders are anymore. Sam Taylor and... Yeah, they've else? got Taylor. They've got Cumming down there. Cumming played all right, I'm pretty yeah, sure. But uh, I don't know if he'll go to a man directly. Yeah. I mean, and then Haynes Gold Coast came back from injury. Really yeah, true. Haynes, oh, he was off a couple of times during the game, so... Oh, yeah. So, as much as I want to tip Gold Coast, I... Ooh. I just can't go past GWS. Yeah. I think it, it, it could be a case of another close game like it was last year. I'm pretty sure there was like a point in it in one of their games last yeah. year. So I am going to go GWS because really they should definitely be getting the job done against Gold Coast. And maybe that scoreboard, I don't, I haven't watched the game, but maybe it flattered them a little bit uh, against Melbourne. So I will tip GWS, mm. but I'm not confident on them and their final hopes for this year, yeah. despite their leads. I've got Gold Coast winning. In fact, what I saw against Melbourne, if they had Ban King this year, they probably could have made the finals because oh. they were all over Melbourne. So many parts of the game. The only reason Melbourne were able to get on top was because every time they kicked it long, um, they just Chol or Caswell just couldn't be there because one of them was already down um, forward line. The other one was potentially on the bench or rotating with. It just seemed like they needed that extra toll. Oh, and Chol did his hamstring as well, I believe. Oh, did so he? He might not be playing. But yeah, I don't know. It's tough. I just feel like, I mean, maybe with Chol out, the Giants could win, but maybe I'll just go Gold Coast because. The team, I feel like, is super talented and their midfield's insanely good at times. Yeah, I'm going to go GWS just because the calibre of their players, it's they've got good. to pull something out. It's yeah. too good, the players that I have, to be playing like that against such a weakened Richmond team. All right, Collingwood versus Cats now. Usually Collingwood always get the upper hand on the Cats, I feel like. But I almost feel like the Cats need to give the Pies a little bit of a reality check. They're still an extremely oh, yeah. young team. Um, who has overachieved this far. I just, I feel like they need to come in and just give the Pies like a little bit of that that reality check. But honestly, the footy that the Pies are playing, even though it was against Adelaide and Saints, who could very well be not very good teams this year, especially Adelaide, it's still like, well, yeah, the Cats should, they should do something. Yeah. People are going from one extreme to the other with Collingwood. I saw Rowan Connolly, I'm pretty sure, before the season predicted that Collingwood would be uh, would win the wooden spoon, which... A lot of people did. Yeah, which doesn't make any sense when you consider the team that they have. Like, they still have Grundy, Moore, Degoli, Pendlebury. Uh, so, I think that people are now overrating Collingwood's chances. Mm -hmm. I've seen, I heard someone on the radio say that they're in with a chance for the eight. I'm pretty sure it was on Triple N. So I don't think Stop that's it. the case. Stop it. <laughs> but uh, I think that they will get a reality check and they'll come back down to earth. Mm. Uh, and Geelong, Cameron should be, well, he was fit enough to play this week. So you'd imagine next week, him and Hawkins yeah. would get a hold of them and the Cats will bounce back from last week. Yeah. We love Craig McRae, though. We can't go oh, past our do. boy, Craig McRae. He is the best coach in the league. <laughs> and Stand there's so it. much there's so much better to watch now than... Like, yeah. I was kind of iffy on when they sacked Bucks, but... He it, like the team needed a new direction. Their game plan had just gone completely dull. It was boring to watch. And now McRae's came in, and yeah, things are looking uh, 
up for Collingwood on their rebuild, at least. We just got to hope no Pies fans. If Pies fans want to give Tigers fans shit ever again, just know that your coach, every single little thing he learned was from <laughs> Richmond, from so shut the hell up. <laughs> Get yeah, the they're going to copy our game plan again. Again, they're copy us for the again. second time. Bro, Bro, and the worst part was Bucks went on TV and admitted <laughs> to like, that was the funniest thing ever. Fool went on Fox Footy and said, yeah, I observed what Richmond did in the offseason. I took a lot of notes. <laughs> yeah, he met with Damien Hardwick in the offseason and then just took everything. And took everything from me. And beat us. <laughs> and then beat us. Oh, my God, bro. All right, the Gabba, the big Gabba game. Brisbane, for, it's not that big. Let's be honest here. It's Brisbane versus North. The Lions are going to absolutely destroy the Kangaroos. The Kangaroos are in shambles. And why oh. I say they are in shambles is because that Coleman-Jones trade is looking <laughs> terrible. Yeah, because uh, Jerry... He went off today. He played really well, apparently. They gave up a future second round pick, which could be like 21, for a bloke who's kicking it in the twos right now. That's what I, I said in my group chat. I was like, I hope Coleman Jones enjoys playing in the reserves, but this time for North Melbourne. <laughs> North Melbourne. Like, it's the same thing. And I'm I'm glad we got rid of him because we have that whole situation for now mm. with Bolter. But anyway... Uh, yeah, North need to show something, and I don't think they're going to be able to do it against Brisbane at the Gabba. Like they could have, they would have lost that game against West Coast by the sound yeah. of it if West Coast didn't have fourteen changes from the oh, week yeah, before. Oh yeah, hundred percent. They almost so, nearly lost it anyway. Like what the hell happened there? Yeah, nearly and, choked, choked the fumble. Everything really. Yeah, they just had nothing against Hawthorne either. Really, Hawthorne just did that quite easily. I mean, uh, Horn Francis. He's like the main excitement, the only excitement out of their club at the moment. But yeah, uh, yeah if if North don't come to play, it could get pretty ugly up there, I reckon. They might rock out with the best twos team ever, bro. Coleman Jones and Stevenson both chilling in the twos. <laughs> I forgot Stevenson got dropped, bro. R2-D2, uh, whatever that <laughs> blokes they got from Collingwood way back. Whatever yeah. his name was, I don't remember who, who he even is, but he's there. <laughs> um, MCG now, I really hope Carlton fans, I really hope the Carlton Football Club gives the Hawks the biggest reality check and <laughs> <laughs> pumps them by 100 because Hawks fans are starting to piss me off because I think they realized a lot of people had them in last. And when they win their first two games, they were kind of just like, well, a big middle finger to everyone. Yeah, and after, especially after they just beat Port like that over there, like yeah. they'd be feeling all sorts of confidence. And I'm pretty sure Lee Montagna, it might not have been said that they're in the running for the eight. Get which... out of here, bro. I still got them finishing last. I don't even <laughs> care. Middle finger back, bro. Bring no, the walls but... the football club. No, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I I'm still I used to defend Hawthorne against you and then before the season I kind of came around to it to mm. them finishing at the bottom end because of like the way the other teams were expected to go. Now I think that they they could very well still finish bottom four, but I think I have Adelaide and North well below them from what yeah, I've seen so far. Point. But obviously we're two rounds in. Everything can yeah, change. Screw it, bro. I'm not going to say anything until I get my lawyer <laughs> because I do not still think the Hawks are going to finish last. No, I don't, I don't even know. The North Melbourne Football Club are in shambles. I didn't think Coleman Jones and Stevenson would be playing two's footy. It just it didn't occur to me that anything like that could happen. I think the Blues will get the job done because I just can't see a way in any world where this Hawthorne team with um, uh, whoever their key, whatever his name is, Mitch Lewis, as Mitch their Lewis. number one, eight goals, eight goals out of nowhere, win three and kicks, I just don't. Yeah, I, I used to like go into bat for Mitch Lewis when he was like younger a couple of years ago because I saw good signs in him. And now he's just come out and kicked five goals and... I, he's not going to do it again, no. like next week. <laughs> Probably not. Uh, I also don't think Bruce and Gunston will kick three goals next week each. No. So yeah, you have to go with the Blues, and the hype will be really real for the Blues now. Yeah. And they've got a pretty easy game the week after. I'm pretty sure. So they might be four and zero. You'd expect the Blues to run all over them next week at the yeah. G. Um, St. Kilda versus Tigers. This is a extremely tricky one. 
Yeah. Man, I, I tipped the Giants to beat the Tigers, and we spoke about this. I never tip against Richmond. It's just not something nah. you do when you go for them, but with every single thing that was pointing to us, we were supposed to lose against GWS. Oh, yeah. We were not supposed to beat them, and does that strike again? Does that... Do we do we lose against the Saints? Like... Oh, is that it's... Marvel as well? And I mean... It's well, just tough. We're not getting... Our list isn't going to get, I don't think, a whole lot better than what we're kind of rocking with right now. Like, because the players that jumped out were like Marlett Pickett and Parker, this and that. A lot of these Oh, Parker and played very well. Like, they are a best lot game right. I've seen him play. Like, Ever, and nearly. he didn't even kick a goal. Yeah. Like, that was really impressive. Also, I would like to say... I think myself and some Richmond Tigers fans would be devastated if Ben Miller gets dropped. That man... Yeah, it's a, it's a real Giants. possibility, though, but he really deserves, deserves at least that next game. My, my thinking is, though, why can't Grimes play with the, these players? Like, is it is it too hard to say that Miller... Again, the Saints have tools, too. Yeah, they've got Max Membry, King, they've got King, Membry, they've got Hayes. Marshall, Hayes. Yeah. So, and, well, Paddy Ryder could come in for Hayes any week now. But, yeah, I he he could play in that team, in that back line, you'd think. Yeah. Does Grimes, because I want to know what his injury is. Gen, I think it was general Just soreness. General soreness. So... Where does where does Grimes come in now? Because I want to see. I still want these guys to play, and obviously he's the captain, yeah. so he instantly gets in. Um, and he's still one of your best players, especially when he's on. He could be your best player. So it's like, well, where does he come in now, though? I, it's going to be really unfortunate, maybe for Miller. I think. Yeah. We because we'll just keep playing Gibkiss, you'd mm. reckon, and yeah, I feel really bad for him, but he just had to come in and do the job while Grimes was gone. Yeah. Tarrant's going to have did. another farewell to it. He's going to go play another year for someone else because we go Ben Miller now. <laughs> That's who the dogs are. We should delist no, him halfway through the year and let the I, dogs pick him up. <laughs> I I grew a love for Robbie Tarrant today. Yeah, he was very good. I'm so glad we got him because we've got inexperienced play, like a more inexperienced side now, and we can just rely on him to make a contest. He, I don't think he lost a one on one today. Uh, no. He'll just punch the ball, he'll kill the ball, put it out of bounds. I, I grew a love for him today. I wasn't like I kept forgetting he was a part of our club, but today, yeah. man. And I honestly think this too. Either Bolter or Lynch could contend for the Coleman this year. That's my, that might stop both of them, though, is they both I, might end up with, like, 35 to 40 goals each and just keep kicking two to three every game each. And yeah, you're obviously I not going to hate that because that, that's what spells out success, but it also yeah. doesn't give either one a Coleman or anything like that. And Lynch is still going to get the hate. Oh, yeah, he will. And Lynch was a lot better today, I thought. He put in a lot of second and third efforts. Mm. He did end up kicking the three goals, which is all we need for, from him every week. Like, that would just be beautiful. And last uh, week, he I, was all right, too, though. Like, what was really wrong with what Lynch did last week besides the lack of ball that he got? Yeah, he just... Yeah, true. He only had, like, a couple of touches. He did kick a couple of goals, but people just weren't happy after the game. Because at, at the game, when he missed a shot on goal, someone yelled out, you get paid the big bucks to kick them. And, like, he's kicked... Massive goals for us. He put us into a grand final in 2019. Yeah, so when he I think five it's against bit... the Cats or whatever. Yeah, he just Crazy. went off. He absolutely dominated. And people forget that so quickly, apparently. We wouldn't have won that premiership without him, probably. So Obviously. Oh, obviously. We would have never even come close without Tom Lynch, especially against games against that four, round half. four. Round four, oh, the, yeah. when we had all those injuries and he came out and kicked six or something. And that we won was, those yeah, games. That was an epic game. People forget how good Tom Lynch was in his first. We would not have the two extra premierships if we never got Tom Lynch. Yeah, and people just put that past him. He gets hate because he doesn't go out and kick five every week or whatever. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I think that Bolter and Lynch in the forward line will work really well in the future from what I saw today. Obviously, it could all go sour next week. Yeah. But um, there were really good signs today. 
Yeah. Um, I don't think so. I think um, I think it will go fine. I mean, I can't look. Uh, Marshall or no, not Mark. What am I forgetting his name, bro? Dougal Howard. Is he, he's yeah. he's he's still like the main key back for the Saints, right? Because I have not, I didn't watch the Saints game. Uh, no, they've Unless got he's um, or something. like Wilkie. They've got Wilkie. They got Battle. Yeah, yeah, Battle. Oh, I, true. Is Howard? I don't know or? if I didn't really see much of him. So I don't know if I saw him uh, what's, Yeah, I don't think he's he was playing, but um, I don't know what like absolute key back they really have. Yeah, because I'm trying to. I'm trying to look right now. I'm looking at their team. Yeah, it doesn't look like... Yeah, he didn't play. Howard didn't play. Yeah, He must be injured. Yeah. Okay, so you got to worry about battle. you got to worry about Wilkie, which... Whatever. Um, and then, yeah, I, I don't know. I think we'll be fine. I, I think I'll tip the Tigers. Um, but again, it is at Marvel. If it was at the G, I'm, tip, I'm instantly tipping the Tigers. But Marvel, it's a... We did go there last year to Marvel and beat them by, I think it was 73 points. Because St. Kilda, you just... Remember. Yeah. Um, I think it was 73. It could have even been more. But St. Kilda can show up or not show up on any given week. They could play really well or really horribly. I will go with Richmond just because I'm so elated with what I saw today. Uh, yeah. And St. Kilda, they just went over and got the job done against Frio. Only saw the last quarter of that after I got home. So, yeah, I will go with Richmond. I couldn't go with the Saints. Fremantle versus West Coast uh, off the stadium. That's the last one. Yeah, well, it depends on the names Who's that playing? come back. Because 14 changes this week and they they looked okay. I mean, they lost to North. But yeah, Frio... Uh, I just don't think they can kick a really big score, yeah. but it might not matter. They might just get it done. I, Frio should be the better team. I'm going to tip the Eagles because Freeman will have... I don't know if Tabin is coming back, but even if Tabin is coming back, him. who other than him is going to kick the goals? Yeah, like Who's they need be Schultz. That guy? They need Schultz to pop up and kick goals. They need... Yeah. Any old random player. They need midfielders to go in and kick goals. I uh, don't even remember. Rory Lobb, they need him to kick goals. But, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I want to go <laughs> with Lobb. the Eagles. Yeah, I, I want to go, go with the Eagles. But, oh, I think I'm going to go with Frio to get it done. Not in the forward line. They'll just get enough done mm. up there to win the game. I, I think Fremantle might be another one of those teams where it's, another step backwards to go yeah. forward like um, the Bombers. And the reality is in the offseason, they're going to have the league's top five midfielder in the game, Lucky Neal, going to want to come back, I would assume. Like, I think that's still I think that's still written in. I, I'm honestly still shocked that the he Lions didn't. didn't get that deal done because yeah. you would have thought six and eight or whatever they had. I think it ended up being eight and ten. 8 and 10 was a lot to knock back for a but dude that had a lot of injuries that year. They, Yeah, they clearly think that with him healthy and apparently he had a good preseason or whatever, yeah. that they could go for a flag, which they clearly can. Yeah, uh, easy. So it, it did make sense to keep him at least for this year, but I did believe that there was more in that than they played it off straight away. Yeah. I think he could definitely still go back to Frio. Uh, mm. So... Yeah, well, he's I, a free I agent do get now. What you're do saying. the Lions even get anything? I would assume he's fully unrestricted, right? Like, what would you get? Yeah, if he if he was, then that wouldn't be good for the Lions. They'd want to win the flag this year. Yeah, and even if they do win it, though, what is? Because people would be like, "Oh, but it's loyalty, loyalty." No, it's not, bro. He looks like a simp. From the words we heard, his wife or whatever desperately wanted to get to Fremantle. And I know a lot of men in my life, and they will do anything that their woman says. And I feel like Lockie Neal is that man. He, yeah. If his wife wants to go to Fremantle, even after winning a premiership, then they're getting to Fremantle. Yeah, I, I did definitely believe there was more in that, and it's definitely yeah. still on the, on, on the, the cards. cards. I don't know... I don't know where I'd put like if it was if he was more likely to stay or go. I'd probably put it fifty mm. fifty right now because we don't really know anything yet. Yeah. But uh, yeah, but why that we're could bringing this happen. up is though is because he's not really the answer anyway. 
bring, bring no. in Lockie Neal and you're like, oh, yeah, we've got a Brownlow. Like, he could d- easily win the Brownlow this year. That is a fact. But what's more important is, look, they I do think maybe they do need it inside mid, especially considering after losing Chera. But, man, do you need a forward, a couple of forwards oh, or so. Bad. Like, you bring in Lockie Neal, this and that, it will do wonders for your team. You'll make the eight, but... There's only so far you can go with Tabana and Lobb and no and one else as your forwards. They were talking pretty heavily about putting Fife forward, like they're confident in that. Yeah, which but it's... You can't really have Nat Fife as a full-time forward to kick all your goals. Yeah, and you're only going to do that anyway if you were to get Lockie near it. Like, I think losing yeah. Sarah immediately put Fife in that. And I don't know who their answer is as a key forward. Do they take a swing on Coleman Jones, who's chilling in the twos right now? <laughs> Legit, though. Like, it's sad that, like, Matt Tabernan became so important for that club to operate on yeah. the field because, exactly. like, you can't have Lob and Tabernan as your key forwards going into the A, into the finals. Yeah. I think we're done with the tips now, though. Um, I think most people will agree with nearly everything we said. Through the wastelands, through the highways.